The call to Christianity is a call to be loosed from slavery to sin, but to become a slave of Christ. A slave is subject to every whim and command of their master. We cannot serve sin and Christ. It's one master or the other. Slavery to sin is selfishness, but slavery to Christ is selflessness. Slavery to sin ultimately leads to sorrow and destruction. Slavery to Christ leads to joy everlasting. Satan fell when he asserted himself over God. Men fell when Adam asserted his desires over God's command. When we sin, we assert our desires over God's in one way or another. When we are saved, we submit our desires to God's. The ironic thing is, God takes better care of us than we take care of ourselves. Through the struggle and difficulty of this life, God ultimately brings us into eternal joy and bliss. Why don't we have any power over sin? If we have free will, why don't we have the ability to choose to be righteous? How is it that we are slaves to sin? We feel as though we have control over our desires, but we actually don't. Can you explain why your favorite candy bar is what it is? Not really. Those flavors just happen to be the most enjoyable for you. We control our minds, but not our hearts. When we make wise decisions, we use our minds to overcome our heart's desires. If you resist the temptation to eat dessert, you are being wise, but you didn't change the fact that your heart desired the dessert in the first place. You simply combated your own heart desires with the self-control of your mind. The heart wants what it wants. Once Adam first asserted his selfish desires over righteousness, he tainted the hearts of all of his offspring. Now that that selfishness is in our hearts, only God can truly change it. All we can do on our own is use some painkillers for the symptoms of terminal cancer. Since we can sin in our hearts simply by desiring something sinful, even if we don't actually act sinful, we still sin in our hearts, which we cannot control. To be saved, we understand the reality of our sin, and we appeal to God's power over our hearts to repent and put our faith in Him. And He gives us a new heart that desires righteousness over sin, a heart that is enslaved to Christ and not sin. What exactly does it look like to be a slave to Christ? Slavery doesn't exactly conjure up positive images in people's minds. But in truth, slavery to God is the best thing that could happen to us. We will, though through trials and difficulty, eventually see the full blessing of being a slave to Christ in eternity of joy and bliss, and will receive plenty of blessings on earth along the way. But as slaves of Christ, what exactly must we do while we're here on earth? Being a slave to Christ does not mean that all Christians must be pastors or ministry men, though those are certainly good ways to serve the Lord. To serve Christ means to do whatever you do for the Lord. God gives different people different interests, allows certain mistakes, and providentially puts each Christian where he wants them for his purposes, even if we can't see them. So whether your interests and skills bring you into parenthood, politics, or plumbing, do what you do with your heart set on Christ. Do your best work, knowing God will use it in one way or another. This is no excuse to ignore serving the church or supporting the spreading of the gospel through it, but rather a call to use your skills for the Lord even if you don't see how He will use them. Slavery to Christ requires that our affections be directed towards Christ above all else that we might enjoy on earth. It's an internal reality of our hearts and not an external legalistic list of do's and don'ts. Different Christians find themselves in different situations with different levels of means, but all belong to the kingdom of God. Job exemplifies that a man can be rich and still serve God, because Job glorified God in prosperity and in poverty when Satan took his possessions away. The rich man that asked Christ how he could enter heaven exemplifies that if your riches hold your affections more than Christ, you cannot follow him. It's about our hard affections, and different people cling to different things. As Christians, we put aside things that our hearts find difficult to dethrone, and we enjoy the blessings God gives on earth in the forms of things that we can receive with joy or lose with joy. Do not fear enjoying things on earth, but do not fear losing them either. Ensure your mind is on heavenly matters as much as it is on earthly things. Do what you do motivated by serving the Lord and not yourself. And in time, you'll be blessed more than you could have gained for yourself, in forms you didn't even know you would enjoy. Not because of your merit, but because of God's loving nature as a father. Stay true to your responsibilities, support the church, and do whatever you do as God has directly commanded you to do so. Here's the thing about slavery to Christ. When someone is kind to us, when somebody loves us, 
we happily serve them and do things for them to make them happy as well. That's what we call a healthy relationship. Just the same. God first loved us when he gave us salvation. And so it only makes sense that it should be our joy that we should want to serve God in all that we do. It should be our joy to be loosed from slavery to sin and its destructive power and to become a slave to the most gracious and kind master there is, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching and as always, spread the truth.